Ottimo, buon pomeriggio a tutti. Good afternoon. Nicola Del Dio, Vice President of MIGO of the Eyewear Show. I'm here introducing Alessandro Farini. We have the Anthau Gruppo Sole, which has been set up to spread the culture on UV lenses and sunglasses, not only in terms of design, but also to address the technicalities of these products and to explore also other themes like distribution, digital communication on these products. The first target we have set is to fill the gap in knowledge not only of uh, final users or opticians, but also gap of knowledge among producers like me or Anfau Associates. In many cases also producers uh, have got a limited knowledge on uh, production technologies and on these products in general. And we should also convey the message uh, that sunglasses are not just a trendy design object, so that they have got a protective uh, function and can also help, uh, as we will hear from Dr. Farini, can also help see better. So this is how we should start uh, thinking. This will probably give us uh, a more opportunities. Let me just hand over to Alessandro Farini of the National Research Council Specialist for Psychophysics and Ergonomy of Vision. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank very much for the introduction. I have to apologize for the translators, he says, because I am a fast speaker, I will try to control as much as possible the pace. I can hardly see you with this blue light, and as we have heard during the introduction, sunglasses should protect and help us see better. Starting from this assumption, we will then understand that sunglasses are not banal products and it's not easy to manufacture good sunglasses. This is a very important aspect. So we have underlying physics if we have to make good sunglasses. I will skip some of these slides. Anyway, sunglasses uh, uh, intervene in the electromagnetic spectrum. So here you see light and what light is made of. Light is just a very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Light as a small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is uh, the first aspect. Uh, up to 380 nanometers, you have UV light from 380 to 780 nanometers. You have visible light from 780 onwards, infrared light. But we should keep in mind that these figures are not marked by fixed boundaries. We have gray areas and it's there that sunglasses can have a beneficial impact. We cannot trivialize and say up to 380 nanometers we have a UV harmful light from 380 nanometers we have visible light which is harmless. 
so there is uh, no sharp uh, fracture line here. And we should also consider that in visible light uh, we have a violet light and blue light uh, which is uh, richer in energy. And as we move away from them, we have a lower level of energy. So green, light orange and red contain less energy. Here you see the colors of the rainbow. Newton was a numerologist and he said we need to have seven colors. Adding indigo blue. We have already covered this aspect. What happens in our eyes? Why are our eyes so important? And why do we need to control exposure to light? As you can see here, most of all for UV light, I will be talking during the presentation. If you see here, we have UV light. The dotted line is cornea absorption. This is the quantity of light which is absorbed by the cornea. It's very short and rich in energy and it's mainly absorbed by the cornea. Then we have this curve-shaped line. This is the light absorbed by the lens at longer wave lengths. So if you remember, this light is richer in energy. And here we have a very first, a first very important consequence. The cornea absorbs uh, uh, shorter wavelengths uh, and light which is richer in energy. Our cornea therefore ex is exposed to very intense uh, UV light which means uh, that corneal damage has got a very fast uh, onset. There are data suggesting that photokeratitis uh, can appear two hours after being exposed uh, to the snow. So corneal damage is very fast. And this is also the great strength of corneal damage. So if you expose your eyes to an excessive quantity of light, if there is corneal damage, you will perceive it almost immediately after a certain latency time, 12 hours afterwards, you perceive you have been exposed to too much light the following day, therefore you will pay more attention to photo damage. Lens damage is more surreptitious and it's more interesting because the wavelengths in point here are longer, uh, light is less rich in energy, so lens damage takes longer to take place. Uh, and also opacification of the lens uh, is more time consuming, which means that uh, we will not wake up in the morning after having been exposed to too much UVA light, realizing that uh, the lens has got yellowish. This is an effect uh, which occurs gradually and very slowly over time, but it's nevertheless very evident. I had read it in books and recently uh, there has been a PhD study on that. Uh, the preliminary tests have been done with PhD students and with yourself. And it was really astonishing to see that uh, my blue vision is completely different from the blue vision, the blue perception of my PhD students because my lens uh, is now yellowish and this has an impact on how I perceive colors. Uh, now I've got uh, the feeling I'm perceiving that blue light very well but compared with other students uh, the perception of blue is really impaired. 
we don't perceive that because uh, uh, this is a gradual damage which develops over time. The very uh, first concept is uh, that we should protect ourselves, uh, not only from what uh, is uh, difficult to bear in the short term, but also for, uh, from longer term exposure. Here you see optical density curves. The higher the curve, uh, the lower the transmittance. Uh, transmittance curves uh, of uh, the lens uh, are really discouraging. Uh, I'm in this area between 45 and 63. That's not my curve, that's not my line. Uh, the lower curves uh, where you have more transmittance are of uh, people who are 20 year old. Uh, and as you get older, you have less transmittance. Uh, Sometimes uh, you are being said, okay, until a few years ago people were paying less attention, they were using less protective lenses because there were also different needs and requirements. I remember my professor at the university, who is now quite old, we have both aged. He wants uh, to write emails and use a laptop. That's why he needs uh, good visual performances, which were uh, not required in the past uh, for 80-year-old uh, people. So here you see the consequence of that. And then we should also add another aspect, which is not directly related uh, to sunglasses. Recently it has been seen that the new light sources can actually cause uh, unexpected problems. There is evidence of UV induced damage. I don't know whether this is visible to everybody in the audience. Here you see a list of conditions in this column. You have a correlation, indication of the correlation between UV exposure and the damage. So certain correlation, a likely correlation or certain correlation, it's a cofactor and so on and so forth, which means we do have undebatable evidence that UV light induces these effects. That's why we need to protect ourselves from UV light. Here you see the UV wavelengths. So if you want to protect your eyes from UV light, you can take an object or a shield made of plastic, but this is not enough. As we will also see later, plastic can protect you from UV light, but it might not have the right optical features to enable you to see well. So it's not just a matter of protection, it's also a matter of good vision. If we just had the need of protecting our eyes, um, simple objects would be enough. We want to protect our eyes and to see the world well and, and even better than we can see it without wearing sunglasses. We want enhanced contrast. We want some problems to have been solved. And this should not be neglected, but even if we confine ourselves to these uh, first level needs, so if we want to be protected, then, as you see in this paper, uh, examining in 2015 some unbranded sunglasses, The paper has found that in some cases uh, the unbranded sunglasses were not compliant uh, with uh, protection provisions, uh, also the uh, provisions on color perception. And this is not easy to measure. I have been invited here and I was a bit uncertain whether to 
leave Florence, uh, my native city. And then I know I was very happy to accept it. Uh, and be here with you because some companies are investing in research and development of some glasses. But sometimes it's difficult to communicate the intrinsic value of research and development to the people. So I think education and awareness raising are very important also when it comes to sunglasses if we really convey the message that it's very important to have good uh, visual performance and also effective protection, then the money spent in research and development will bring a return. It's not just a price issue, it's not just a design and fashion, they really matter, but there's more about the sunglasses and this is very important. So there is, we have uh, two different classes of UV light and uh, of course uh, uh, we have uh, UV light uh, that is more harmful. It's obvious that as you all know regulations and provisions on sunglasses do not state that certain sunglasses should completely filter off UV light. Unfortunately, this is not the case. If we want to filter off 100% of the UV light, then it's not enough to be compliant with regulations. So there's something more we should be searching for. Earlier I was uh, listening to the other panelists uh, and it's true visual requirements are not the same uh, for all individuals and they also depend on the circumstances. Um, I also teach at university. This is not necessarily bad, you know, because uh, one should consider uh, the circumstances and the application for glasses or sunglasses. So, for instance, snow uh, reflects UV light very, very effectively. That's why when we are on the snow, we need to wear special snow glasses. And the same goes for sand, which can reflect light. And uh, similar considerations also apply to water. So there are many elements to consider. The companies have done something which is really extremely positive. So the UV index, for instance, uh, this is a very important information and it's something we should consider very carefully in newspapers, in weather forecasts, uh, you often find uh, the UV index. Uh, it's a value, a number. The higher it is, the higher uh, the risk we have for the health of our eyes. Uh, Italy is a country where we have a high UV risk, which also means that there are many nice sunny days. The, and we also live in a country where the UV index and risk are present uh, all through the year. The UV risk uh, has to be considered also depending on the time of the day. There are fluctuations during the day. Most of the UV light, of the active UV light, is between 10 and 2 p.m. That's typically uh, the time window. This is uh, where you have the most active UV light, which is more harmful. And this is really when you should be wearing a sun protection. 
for sure the UV index, this value or number that you can Google for, for, for instance, for Milan, I think tomorrow is not going to be a sunny day. So if you Google, Google for weather forecast, UV index, uh, Milan Fiera, then you will find a value. This will give you an idea of how much you should protect yourself depending on your skin type. So Nicole Kidman, for instance, where we have very strict provisions on sunglasses, she's phototype 1. So this is the reason for having more protection. If you are a darker skin type, then less protection. You will notice that also here we have the guidelines of the World Health Organization. Sunglasses appear in all of these classes, so it's not something which has been invented by manufacturers of sunglasses. They comply with real needs. And here you see seven to nine, how we have really a very dangerous situation. Seven to nine, high, when you have very high UV indices. So we can be partly reassured. Actually, no, this is Florence, uh, not even Florence, uh, Sesto Fiorentino. If you know in detail the geography of our areas, uh, that's uh, Florence uh, last uh, July. In practice, uh, all of the month uh, between uh, 7 and 9 uh, UV indexes, uh, Florence, uh, it is not uh, by the sea and not at a certain altitude, 56 meters, uh, Florence, all the month of uh, July. UV index between 7 and 9, uh, that is to say, between such levels, where the indication for sure, for sure, uh, important, uh, yes, for phototype 1, 7 and 9, also phototype 3, is in a situation of uh, attention that should be devoted. We spoke about the day, the season and the period. All of such factors are really decisive. But at the same time, uh, nice sunglasses uh, uh, shouldn't only protect you, but they should do something more. They should allow you to see a bit better. Uh, and. Uh, we, are we speaking about uh, something absurd? No, I usually show this slide. I found it a couple of years ago. Uh, this slide comes uh, from uh, a presentation of uh, uh, the US Air Force. They said, OK, if by day you have to drive uh, a, a fighter plane, you can use, uh, depending on the situation you operate in, in the very various uh, tasks you should uh, uh, fulfill. You should fly over the jungle, uh, over the desert, over the sea. You should use a different type of filter. And uh, they gave indications on the different type of filter to perform a different type of task. And uh, notice, here we're not speaking about commercial aspects. Uh, the American uh, US Air Force has, uh, as a name, the attainment of a result. And attainment of a result means using the right type of filter. And obviously, this raises problems. Uh, and uh, why is war waged at night? Uh, we're not speaking about advanced technology, any army uh, can have it. Uh, if you wage a war at night, technology makes a difference. But uh, by day, perception uh, was for sure affected uh, by the different type of filter. 
there may be extreme cases, uh, for example, uh, hunting, uh, uh, and um, and where you need a specific type of filter. But uh, what is interesting is that depending on what you filter, you can improve uh, contrast in specific contexts and situations. You may say, "I'm not uh, a Top Gun pilot." Uh, Yes, right, but you drive the car, you perform a set of activities where the improvement in contrast can really be decisive. We're not speaking about absurd things, and uh, I will give you examples later. And uh, this is shown also by research uh, showing that uh, with certain type of glasses, performance uh, can improve uh, its complex uh, studies uh, difficult uh, to carry out because uh, the human eye has a big difficulty to adapt. When I close you in a lab uh, and uh, when we make experiments, uh, it's different uh, than in real life experiments. Uh, should always be made in real life. And inviting people to come to a lab uh, raises limitations. I'm sorry. But that's the way I am. Uh, I make digressions. Uh, once uh, we uh, wrote a thesis on sensitivity and contrast, not after the use of filters, but after having drunk a lot of alcohol. And uh, with amazement uh, and awe, we discovered that after drinking much alcohol, contrast the sensitivity was exactly the same as before. You may understand how concerned we were, because if we had published uh, such results, uh, they uh, would kill us. Uh, it seems an invitation to drink and then drive. But what have we understood? That uh, uh, contrast uh, sensitivity is something so highly sophisticated that if you invite somebody to come to a lab, uh, somebody that has drunk, and if you ask uh, uh, this person to perform a task, he can perform it. But uh, uh, if uh, uh, you instead uh, don't say, now you have an experiment, sit there. But uh, if you ask uh, in everyday life uh, the person to uh, fulfill a task, you have difficulties. The same thing is true with filters, uh, and uh, especially in those uh, environmental situations when I ask you to do something to perform a task. In that case, the different type of filtering of radiations uh, makes a difference. Uh, and uh, other images. Uh, bear with me. Uh, my time is almost uh, over. I will no longer make such remarks, but every time uh, I show you a formula, I should say, I apologize for the form formula. No, I don't apologize uh, for showing you formulas. And uh, rather, uh, an educational aspect is that formulas uh, should be more and more clear. I do not understand uh, why in Italy, uh, if you make uh, mistakes in Italian, it's social and acceptable, while instead, uh, if you make uh, uh, mistakes in mathematics, uh, uh, you, you say, I've never understood mathematics, uh, and everybody says, oh, how fun. No, it's not funny. And uh, why is it so difficult to, to make glasses uh, that filter light well? Because, for example, the regulation, in terms of filtering of light, uh, regulation is extremely smart. Something is protection against the UV light. Something is protection against the visible light. Transmittance, uh, transmittance uh, provided uh, as a single number when you buy sunglasses, uh, it's not uh, the average of transmittance uh, in various wavelengths. It is not so. It would be nonsense. Uh, the regulation rightly stresses uh, that uh, we are that curve uh, you have there, and it says, uh, well, remember, you are more sensitive in certain wavelengths and less sensitive uh, to other wavelengths. Uh, that S uh, uh, of D65 reminds you that uh, you don't use those uh, sunglasses everywhere but when you're exposed to the sun and you should take into account that you have solar emission. For example, this formula 
is not uh, an absurd uh, mathematical formula to cause difficulties, uh, but it, it is useful to understand that when we speak about transmittance, uh, we cannot just take into account the lens manufactured, uh, but uh, it has be to be compared uh, with the type of sensitivity of the human eye and uh, uh, the place where we are. And uh, to make and manufacture good lens, uh, you should know that you have such three factors, but uh, it doesn't uh, end up here. And uh, this also means that I know it might seem trivial to state it, but it's necessary to state it. I cannot judge uh, uh, sunglasses uh, just uh, uh, on the basis of the color because uh, uh, similar colors uh, can be completely different in terms of spectrum and they can have different uh, filtering properties. Uh, it's metamerism and it's extremely present uh, and it's extremely important. So, we should pay a lot of attention uh, 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 and uh, uh, choice of uh, sunglasses uh, uh, cannot be uh, uh, something random uh, uh, and sunglasses uh, should be chosen with great attention. You have so many papers showing and uh, uh, in uh, uh, when uh, you have uh, sight loss uh, and filtering of light improves uh, visual performance uh, and uh, results uh, are obvious. Uh, you have uh, improvement in uh, uh, visual acuity and uh, contrast sensitivity and uh, cutting a certain type of wavelength and, for example, eliminating certain uh, short wavelengths uh, uh, that diffuse more inside the eye. This can bring about uh, an improvement in visual performance and uh, this is fundamental. And uh, it's an aspect uh, that counts and counts a lot. Perception of color, again, if you make a dark lens, okay, nice, but who can guarantee that through that dark lens I can perceive color correctly? Regulation uh, has worked and is working on this, and uh, it speaks about uh, certain parameters uh, whereby sunglasses, uh, even if they're dark, uh, uh, they shouldn't uh, excessively uh, cut one color vis-a-vis -vis another because uh, otherwise I lose the perception of that color and I no longer see it. This can involve uh, huge problems also in recognition uh, of uh, traffic lights uh, and it's not easy. Manufacturing sunglasses complying with the regulation in terms of uh, vision of colors is not something simple. And uh, very often it happens uh, that uh, with the unbranded uh, sunglasses, uh, uh, if you examine such sunglasses, uh, they are not compliant uh, with the rec regulation for the recognition of colored signals. Uh, this uh, balance is extremely difficult and it's so interesting. It's not enough to make uh, dark sunglasses. Uh, I should make them not penalizing one color too much over another so that visual perception is uh, protected. There's uh, still a long way to go. Many uh, papers on vision of color can tell us, uh, uh, okay, if you have an anomalous uh, vision, but uh, such papers are not so advanced uh, 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 in uh, saying if the perception of color is better or not. Uh, you may have read uh, in uh, magazines and newspapers uh, that you have uh, colored uh, uh, sunglasses uh, that uh, give vision to certain people. Uh, and uh, uh, if uh, uh, you have uh, uh, successfully uh, performed uh, uh, th the test uh, with the green do uh, colored dots uh, uh, well uh, uh, those uh, glasses uh, are cheating on the test and you can uh, be successful in the test but identifying uh, the correct uh, colored signal is extremely difficult so uh, we uh, spoke about blue light and uh, uh, the uh, protection feature of blue light uh, and uh, it's so interesting because uh, if you go around here this trade fair 
you may find a stanza where they say that uh, uh, you uh, should uh, be careful uh, eliminating good blue light, uh, 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 but blue light, not good blue light. Speaking about sunglasses, if on the one hand part of blue light actually is risky and involves a risk because uh, uh, it can lead to macular degeneration, part of blue light instead is very useful for our visual system because it's that part that allows our visual system to adjust circadian rhythm. And uh, uh, this discovery, fortunately or unfortunately, is not so old. Uh, uh, response curves uh, to that curve that you see in red, uh, response curve of our circadian uh, rhythm, it's uh, the wake sleep cycle. It's uh, what uh, uh, makes us uh, be ready in the morning and uh, make us uh, falling asleep at night. Uh, the discovery of wavelengths uh, 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 that uh, excite our circadian uh, cycle is recent, 2003. There's still uh, a long way to go. But uh, what's the toughest thing? The blue curve uh, represents uh, retina damage. You see how the two curves are close? Uh, theoretically, uh, red. Uh, excites uh, our circadian uh, cycle. If uh, by day I use sunglasses, uh, if I want to receive uh, 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 the, the sunlight uh, for my uh, wake sleep cycle, I should stop uh, the blue part, blue segment. So do you understand why it is so difficult uh, to make sunglasses that uh, uh, can uh, uh, fulfill these two different requirements. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, it's not enough uh, to have uh, something dark to cut. You have to cut being smart uh, and taking into account uh, such things so that uh, you have both advantages. Protection on the one hand, improvement in contrast, uh, improvement in circadian cycle, and uh, uh, keeping together all of such things is no easy task. And uh, you should do all of this also by preserving optical quality of surfaces. Again, why it isn't uh, anything OK? Because, uh, as you know, a piece of uh, glass or plastics is not uh, the easiest uh, thing to do in the world. If you do not process it well till, for example, uh, 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 till Uh, you are in a para-axial uh, direction uh, through the optical uh, axis of the lens. Uh, things can work, but if I decided to look sideways, right or left, if the lens is not a well-manufactured uh, state of the art, optical problems may really arise and be felt. I may introduce uh, critical aberrations, and if sunglasses uh, uh, are uh, progressive, you may have huge problems uh, and, uh, uh, and prescription lenses uh, and uh, uh, optics of uh, surfaces uh, can never be forgotten. And uh, hence, uh, I'd like uh, to summarize. Uh, I, I don't know if there's space for questions after and uh, uh, I said perhaps uh, there's no space for questions. If you have questions, you can write me. You have my email address, so I will give you an answer. Or you can uh, find me on social networks. Now, now I also have Instagram. Uh, I don't yet have Snapchat. Uh, it's for young people. Uh, I couldn't do it. I didn't even understand how it works. Uh, I have an age-related limit, my uh, children tell me. However. Uh, if there's no time for questions, uh, you can contact me anyway. So, which are the fundamental messages, uh, evidence uh, of uh, damage from radiation uh, uh, is uh, uh, sound uh, and there.
we physicists, I'm a physicist, what do we do when we carry out research? We block all the variables, we freeze all the variables, and the ball gets into the tilted plane. We block the temperature, everything is blocked, the angle is fixed. The only thing that changes is time, and I measure G. When you make medical measurements, uh, and if you ask yourself, uh, does this radiation uh, create a damage? You may have different people living in different conditions, eating different foods. It's difficult. But it's now obvious uh, that uh, radiations uh, cause damage. At the same time, uh, radiations are uh, uh, not just UV light. Uh, and uh, in nature, you don't have a blunt separation at 390 nanometers, you may have threatened radiations that can cause problems. Why didn't we take them into account in the past? Because average age and visual requirements were different, so protection for sure must be increased, must be enhanced, and furthermore, Remember that uh, our vision, for sure, can be improved under certain circumstances uh, thanks to filters uh, that increase contrast. The circadian cycle is strongly affected by light uh, that gets into our eye. Blocking everything might mean uh, blocking the wake-sleep cycle. It's no good. And at the same time, consider that what you have in front of your eyes is not any uh, a common piece of plastics or glass, but it should comply with certain uh, optical features, because otherwise our perception uh, would be affected. Uh, and I would tend to say good luck to our manufacturers because they should do all of this and at the same time manufacture a product that is good looking, that can be purchased and having such features. It's an extremely interesting challenge and in terms of research we would be glad to help you, especially in communicating the importance of certain fundamental steps. Thank you so much. Adesso now, I don't know if you have any questions to ask. It's always nicer to interact personally rather than doing it through the social media. Let me just check whether there are any questions. So there is one question over there. Microphone, and I don't know if the question is in English. Uh, no, it's very friendly questions. I ask you, yes, what kind of uh, glasses for sun protection y uh, you wear? Okay, a very, very difficult question <laughs> because, okay, la, la, la domanda è che tipo di. The question was about um, the sunglasses I use to protect myself. A very tricky question for two reasons. First, because as you well know, you shoe makers are not necessarily wearing the best shoes. Working in the sector, I have privileged relationships with manufacturers. So I use very good lenses that I have received for free from producers to make tests. I like very much green lenses because under normal circumstances, uh, they give you good color perception and good protection. But in extreme circumstances, if there's no snow, if I am on the mountains, then I wear specific glasses. So full protection lenses or glasses for these specific applications. I'm a great fan uh, of polarized lenses. That's also a very interesting physical phenomenon. I am a physicist and I like the idea of wearing something that is very interesting from a physical point of view. 
so with all the constraints that these lenses might have, uh, uh, with the limitations of polarized lenses when you're driving, the poor interaction with the digital displays, I'm a great fan of them. And I also like photochromatic lenses because if you're not in an emergency situation, photochromatic lenses can offer very interesting applications. I am a matter expert and I'm lucky enough to receive lenses free of charge. That's why I can test a different type of glasses depending on the situation. If I had to answer the question in short, well, not just a pair of glasses. Also because I can afford wearing different types of sunglasses. We don't have the ideal sunglasses which fits all circumstances. But, okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? We are probably running out of time. I will be conducting, moderating, asking questions and answering them. There are also some students of mine, happy you are also here. I think we can now close. Thank you very much indeed and I hope you have a very successful exhibition.